Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, things are hot, hot, hot on Wendy, starting with all of the steamiest hot topics. And we've got all this week's big headlines and even bigger opinions with Wendy's Hot Talk panel. Plus, see this summer's hottest new toys first. Perfect for kids big and small. Now, here's Wendy! It's the weekend. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Look, I have got something to tell you, and this is very important. Attention, Robert Pattinson. We've all been young and loved, and we know how our hormones and emotions get swept away, but you, dear, are doing the wrong thing. Because most of us weren't your age and worth $100 million and in love. And engaged to a girl who, up until meeting you, was borrowing money from her father. Well, that's how it's going down. Okay, okay, um, this is twigs, figs, twigs, figs, figs, twigs, uh, uh, FKA twigs, that's her. And this is his girlfriend of six months. They never knew each other, they met for the first time in September. Next thing you know, they become engaged. Now, according to Star Magazine, he doesn't want a prenuptial agreement. Even though, she was borrowing money from her father prior to the meeting. Um, she's some sort of singer or something like that. I mean, I'm sure talented, but no money. Whereas he's worth this $100 million. But he's got old fashioned values like, you know, I venture to say, I bet you there are a lot of people in Hollywood that aren't all crazy and wild like we read about in the magazines every week. There are plenty of people in Hollywood that, that I'm sure have, that are from good stock with good old fashioned values and they believe in love and sometimes those are the people who are worth $100 million but meet somebody who's not worth anything and they get married because they believe in the love. However, this is a huge mistake. <laughs> I, I mean, this is, this, this is, this is big. Uh, you remember how you felt when you were young and in love and only knew somebody for six months? It's too soon to do anything except for be young and in love. It definitely not be engaged. <laughs> And um, while he shouldn't think just with his heart, while I would like to believe that there are people around him to help guide him, I'm sure that most of the people around him are on his payroll oh. or are not in a position to tell him what to do because he takes care of them. Like, I don't know whether his mom and dad are still alive or around or whatever, but perhaps his mother and father grew up or you know, raised him humbly, so therefore he's paying for their you know, McMansion you know, and they're, they're Audi or, or something. And the manager, well, a manager is just somebody who takes a percentage unless the manager is 
cleaved unto you in some sort of way. Um, so these people were probably telling him, you know, Robert, what are you doing? You only know this girl for six months and you're engaged. They're planning on getting married this summer, by the way. So this is, oh. yes, yes. And it's gonna be a small, low key wedding, maybe in somebody's backyard. I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm surprised that he's not more jaded given the success and experience that he's had in Hollywood, but it's kind of refreshing that he's not that jaded. You know, it's sweet to me, but Kristen Stewart, his ex-girlfriend cheated and we had receipts cause we, I mean, it was a whole scandal. Remember with that married man and, yeah. and the married man's wife, his name was Liberty oh. and she ended up leaving him. So she, she wrecked the home and wrecked the relationship with Robert. Not that, because you get cheated on, you're supposed to have a hardened heart for the rest of your life. I don't believe in that either, but your heart is not supposed to get this blind. Yeah. Yeah. So I... <laughs> I wish them well, unfortunately. I foresee a, a big hot topic story on this in approximately six months. Okay, okay. And Scarlett Johansson, well, you know, she is married to a man, he's a French journalist, they live in Paris. Now, you remember what happened when Carrie moved to Paris? <laughs> sex in the city, people, sex in the city. Okay, when Carrie moved to Paris following Mikhail Baryshnikov, do you remember? Yes. She, she, you know, when you move to a foreign country, sometimes you speak a piece of the language or maybe you speak all the language, but the point is is that you, it sounds fabulous and glamorous and you're gonna make new friends. The problem is that, you know, she was, Carrie wasn't able to make friends. You know, that she was not Parisian as she thought she was and she longed for America, do you remember? Yes. The only friend she made was that dog in the restaurant <laughs> who, who, who ate her leftovers, right? Cause she... <laughs> you know, she would go out to eat by herself cause she had no friends. As best I could tell, the best part about Paris for Carrie is that you were able to smoke in the restaurants, right? Remember she stepped in the doggy do with her good shoes and she had to wipe it off. And remember her friends wanted to give her a party but my uh, Baryshnikov told her you can't go to the party, remember? And then she ended up coming back to America and breaking up with him. So we romanticize about living, you know, in foreign lands. However, much like Carrie, this is Scarlett Johansson. She hates it. She thought it was gonna be fabulous and glamorous. Well, you know, he's a journalist. He's not worth as much as she is, uh, you know, but she does have enough money to be flying back and forth and still so socializing here in this country. The problem is, is that now they have a little goober and her name is Rose. So you can't be jet setting like that. Besides, even if they didn't have a baby, you can't jet set if you cleave unto another, you know? You know, you're supposed to be married. So she reportedly is so miserable, she's ready to leave, and her husband, Romaine, wants her to stay. He looks mean, right? Yes. He looks like when he tells her no, she, she, she cries and goes in the bathroom. Um, I don't, you know, this relationship is uh, very lopsided, and I smell a divorce pending. And this is why. Well, what's he going to do? You can't. You can't stop a man from working because for most men, you know, their work and able to provide for their family in some way or another is, is defined in their manhood. Not all men, but most men, you know, and you could say, well, they can move to Hollywood and he could work for the LA Times or something. Well, that's a possibility, but does he look like he's trying to listen to that? Okay. He look. He looks like he's trying to stay right there in Paris and he's trying to tell her, and you stay right here with me, woman. <laughs> and if you try to take my kid with you, then I will uh, do like the actress from the soap operas, what's her name? Kelly Rutherford. Rutherford. Kelly Rutherford. You know her story. Well, that's a whole nother story. I don't feel like going to Go Google it. <laughs> It's a whole nother story, but it's a, a, it's a disgusting story about um, she's an American and he's foreign and, and he took the kids and now she's protesting in the courts and it's just a horrible, horrible situation. I can tell you what else in my mind I think that uh, Scarlett misses. Scarlett misses the paparazzi. I think, that, I think that a lot of these stars, particularly the A-list ones who are constantly used to being hounded, they say, wah, 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 we don't like it. But the second it stops, I think that they miss it. And while, yeah. And you know, I 
also think that in her mind, she quickly sees that even though she's A-list, we forget about her because we think about Charlize Theron and Jennifer Lawrence and some of those other cute A-list girls who, you know, they all remind me of the same person. <laughs> uh, kind of, sort of. So if you take Scarlett out of the equation, I'm not thinking about her and I'm the Hot Topics lady. I'm supposed to think about all of them. And I'm not thinking about her. That's all. For Pete's sake, Pete. <laughs> As in Holly Robinson, Pete. You can't do this. Reality TV. It's a cute show though, sounds like. Holly and her family, and they're all cute. You know, she's married to Rodney Pete, the former um, football star. Um, anyway, and they have their kids and Holly's mom is 80 years old. Sidebar, Holly's mom used to manage George Clooney back in the day. Yeah. Anyway, Holly and her family are gonna be doing a reality show called, for Pete's sake, for the OWN Network. Now, I'm sure that this show will be perfectly cute, it'll be perfectly wonderful, and perfectly boring. <laughs> well, here's my thought. And we talk about reality TV and I tell you how I'm no longer into the ratchetness, but I'm also over the sweetness. Like, I'm sorry. Um, I loved Run's House when it was on TV. The family was so cute, but that's cause my kid was younger and it was a different time in reality TV. And also we knew more about Run, the, the edgier side. You know, he was a, he, he was a, he's a rapper. And I, I, I don't know, but I don't even have tolerance for that cuteness anymore. Like they still, they still do stuff, the Run family on TV. Hi Justine, I'm just saying, your family's, I, I, it, like I moved past that too. And I tried to get with the Manzos over in Jersey and I watched that for like three episodes or so and I thought that I really liked that show, but that was too cute and sappy. Like I don't like too sappy and I don't like too ratchet. I like right down the middle, like million dollar listing. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I like, Leah Remini has a show which got renewed for a second season, but she's got an edge and her family's got an edge and the Peets are just sweet and just sweet. I don't know about you, that doesn't work for me anymore. Uh, <laughs> clap if this sounds like a show you'd be interested in. You got yourself another stinker. Oh. All right, um, let's move along. <laughs> I can't believe not one person said yes. I, like, I can't believe that. Okay, so William and Kate, who I love. I love them. I do not think that this guy will do to his wife what his father did to Diana regarding that Camilla woman. <laughs> I think that um, I think that they're perfect, and the idea that now they have not one but two cute—I just think they're perfect, you know. So, but apparently, the new baby Charlotte is causing a royal feud. Well, the queen mother reportedly is fighting with Kate's mom, Carol, which is such a regular name. <laughs> it's it's Carol with an E. Anyway, um, so apparently the queen mother is pissed because, <laughs> sounds funny. Uh, she's upset because Carol got not one, but two visits with baby Charlotte before the queen mother even got her first. But that's because the queen mother was occupied doing her royal duties. I guess maybe cutting the ribbon on a new mall or something, I, I don't know. Smashing a champagne bottle on a boat, I don't know. All I know is that the, if the queen mother's busy, then it's like the royal protocol, first of all, I wish that the real royals would be done away with like the royals on TV on E. Like they're going through that right now. They're gonna abolish the royals. It comes on, that's my Sunday night thing. You know, the, the royals. Anyway, look, so, okay. So here's my thought about the queen mother. The queen, it, first of all, am I the only one in the room who had the pleasure of knowing my great-great-grandmother. 
clap if you knew your great-great-grandmother. My great-great-grandmother Isadora was a huge influence on my life. Now, I never had a grandmother. My grands all passed away, but my great-grandmother, she was a pisser. <laughs> she used to tell me to hold my stomach in <laughs> and keep it held in to, you know, strengthen. She didn't know strengthen the core, but she, she you know, she just hold your stomach in. And she used to make me boiled potatoes <laughs> with no butter cause, on account of my fat. Aww. Don't you worry, I got the purple chair. Yeah. And, Look, look, and, and she used to give me coffee even when I was like eight years old, like full Sanka, she drank Sanka. Full Sanka with cream from the can, you know, the thick stuff, and real sugar, not like sweet and low. And then she used to put that carpet sweeper in my hand and tell me to go exercise and I'd be carpet sweeping. <laughs> anyway, but, but the thing is is that, you know, the queen is out of touch to think that a mother is not going to go see her daughter give birth, you know? And I am so team Middleton on this and respect to, you know, the queen, but all day, every day, a daughter is more important than royal protocol. And what I love about William is that if William really cared about protocol, he would have married an aristocrat, not a commoner. What I love about him is that he fell for a commoner and is making his family get with the program. Yeah. Yeah, that's it with that. Oh. I hate when that happens, I hate that. I hate that. Uh, look. Well, say goodbye to Lady Gaga as you know her. But for many of us, say goodbye to a Gaga that we can relate to more. She's decided to do away with this nonsense. And embrace her more glamorous side. And I think that this is terrific. In other words, this, ladies and gentlemen, is Steffi, Stephanie. And, you know, I don't know whether she planned on doing this all along. In other words, shocking, she has a gorgeous voice. You know she does. And I've always thought that Lady Gaga is an odd beauty. You know, she's not a dead on like a Giselle Boonshan or you know, you know, something like, she's an odd beauty. And sometimes odd beauties are the best beauties because dead on beauty is so common. It doesn't force you to squint and see the beauty in someone. Uh, and I feel, so I was asked, you know, in our Hot Topics meeting before the show, Wendy, do you think that her monster, monsters. little monsters, that's what she calls her super fans, or they call themselves, do you think that the little monsters will abandon her now that she wants to embrace her glamorous side? And I said no, because you know what, the, the little monsters, see, Lady Gaga communicates deeply with her monsters. I mean, she embraces all kinds of social issues and, and embraces change and, her true fans know her for being beautiful on the inside. So whether, so whether she comes out in a meat dress or Chanel Couture, they love her. But I'll tell you what this does do. So in other words, she hasn't lost fans. The ones who love her, love her. But I can tell you from my perspective as a grown up, um, this makes me, the regular look makes me a bigger fan than I was. So, I, uh, and if you've ever heard her talk on Howard Stern or seen her interview with Perez Hilton and stuff, she's a really sweet girl. Madonna, take note. Yeah. Just take note, that's all. So Stephanie, Lady Gaga, whatever you wanna call yourself, we still love you and we know your beauty from inside and I like this outfit better than a meat dress anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's always dangerous when people never say never, except when you're a woman, because you're allowed to change your mind. I always feel like that's our prior, uh, prior, pr prerogative. Um, anyway, Miley Cyrus vowed that she'd never have long hair again. Well, I think that Miley is beautiful. Her eyes are captivating and her smile is beautiful. And so she's one of those girls who looks great long or short, but, um, with the help of some extensions, she did, you know, pop them in, uh, you know, for one night. It's our hot shot of the day. Observe what she's laying in bed with. Hit it. Yeah. 
Now, not for nothing, it does look like she just popped those in. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, look, look you could see the, sh well, th there's the bed. Yeah, up there at the top, you could see like where they're not blend, it is not blended, and they're just kind of thrown in there haphazardly. She's a beautiful girl though. Now show her laying on the bed with all of her extension collection. So funny, <laughs> so funny. Uh, that's not a story, it's just something I wanted to show you. Miley Cyrus with the long or the short. Hey, it's Friday, clap! Yeah! And we've got more great show for you. We've got the summer's hottest toys, but up next, our Hot Talk panel is gonna break down the hottest stories of the week, so don't go far. Coming up, we're covering it all in Hot Topics. Celebrity news, hookups, and drama. Check, check, check. <laughs> and amazing, trendy at Wendy deals for you. Love these earrings. They're really substantial, too. They're not like all bendy at Wendy. <laughs> Monday on an all-new Wendy. discuss the week's hottest topics with the latest edition of Hot Talk. Joining me today are our, our friend from the Steve Wilco Show. Say hello to Steve! <laughs> <laughs> and the host of What You Missed, it's Nikki Boyer. Yeah. yeah! And give it up for entertainment journalist, our friend Sharon Carpenter. Yeah. Okay, let's get started. This is very important. Come close. <laughs> The co-creator of the hit TV show Empire, Lee Daniels, is causing controversy. During a recent roundtable discussion about the show, mind you, this is a room full of people, Lee talked about his preference to hire black writers. Hold on. Oh, she's putting the glasses on. <laughs> Here's what he says. Getting serious. <laughs> I don't know what gives me more pleasure, watching my story unfold or, give it, or going in and watching a room full of black people writing words for black people. I hate white people. I haven't finished. You're going to take it out of context. Don't leave it there. Writing for black people. It's so offensive. So we go out and look for look specifically for African-American voices. Yes, it's all about reverse racism. I'm offended. <laughs> and, I, you know, as a black woman, I'm offended. I can tell you this right now, you know, only because being a black woman with a show that is supposed to be multicultural uh, and diverse here in daytime TV, we hire the best people. And we happen to have a, we, we, we have, and, and I don't have writers. I make my own jokes, but, but um, we have a, a diverse staff here at Wendy, and that would be like um, somebody who's gay with a talk show saying, I only hire gay people. It's kind of like he's setting himself up for a lawsuit. I'm offended. I don't know if you are. And this show would not be the hit it is uh, without the love of everybody, just like Obama. <laughs> Obama would not be in the White House without the love of everybody. The black voice is not strong enough to keep me on for six seasons. We need everybody. I think that he is shooting himself in the foot. And by the way, the co-creator of Empire happens to be white. That's all, that's all I have to say. Sharon? Well, I think that right there says it. Lee, I've interviewed him quite a few times. I've known him for a few years. He likes to be provocative. He likes to joke around a little bit during interviews. And I think that he's just trying to bring attention to the fact that there is not enough diversity in Hollywood, in front of the camera or behind the scenes. That's I kitchen. think that's, he knows how the media works. So this is why we're talking about it right now. Um, and he, as you said, he has a white co-creator. He has a white showrunner. He has Hispanic writers, black writers. So I mean, his team is pretty diverse. But he said he doesn't. He doesn't care for white writers. He said he prefers he, white. Yeah, writers. I, I mean, think there's a difference. Exactly. He, said, <laughs> he, 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 he said I hate white writers writing I, for black people. There's a difference here. He, he means when all you have, you have black actors, but all you have is white writers writing for them. It doesn't make any sense. He wants the experience to be authentic with this show. Right. Oh, well, I, and I, I understand that part also. Steve, what do you say? Steve! I, uh, I mean, I really don't have a problem with it. It's, it's, it's a show about a very black cultural hip-hop, right? Right. Or rap or whatever it is. I haven't seen the show. 
<laughs> I know it's I know it's super successful. Yeah. It's the biggest hit that's come out of TV a long time. So if that's his opinion and that's what he wants, I, I really have no problem with it. Uh, well, I do. <laughs> I, I do. I, I mean, honestly, you know. Well, your show's a different show. You're, different you are show. reaching out to everybody, and, and the experience that you're sharing are, are, are multicultural. This is a story about black people. And you don't, he wants people who have their finger, or who have their finger on the pulse exactly. of that story. Who have experienced what you're seeing on the show. Absolutely. Like, he's intentionally bringing on those consultants I feel and those as though, I feel as though th there are others, other than black, in other words, others that can still embrace that experience. When this show first started, Suzanne was the whitest woman I know. <laughs> you know? Uh, but she's lovable. And now, what? you're both. <laughs> You know what? I understand what he's saying. I think that that was more kitchen table talk than saying it for everybody to know. That, that okay. you, you know he what I'm saying? Once he told me, he told me one time about how he was wearing spanks under his tuxedo. Yeah. The tuxedo was too tight. Yes. So I mean, he he does dive no, I, li a lot I of like I like Lee. Yeah. He, he Lee does a lot of talking though. By the way, I like the original version of Empire called Hustle and Flow. <laughs> you know, and that, you know that's great. It was written, directed, and produced by a white guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> Oh. All right, let's move on to the next story, which I love. All right, this mother in Georgia is causing controversy the way she disciplined her 10-year-old son, Sean. Now, now, Sean was causing a lot of trouble at school, and punishment wasn't working. So, as a last resort, mom called the cops to fake an arrest to scare him straight. The cops... <laughs> now, look, look. The cops didn't come to the house, or didn't go to the school. She called the cops to come to the house. Um, and Sean was so scared that he tearfully apologized to his mom. Some people say that she went too far. I say, you go, mom. Steve, you're a former cop. Uh, what do you think? Um, to be quite honest, I did the same thing when I was a Chicago police officer. There was people that were having problems with their kids, and they asked me, hey, would you scare my kid? Yeah. And, you know, I put them in cuffs and put them in the back of the squad car and took them in the lockup and showed them how, what's going to happen if right. you don't straighten out. And I had kids crying, too. Uh, and, you know, the biggest thing is, here's, here's a mom trying to do something so her kid's not a bad kid. Absolutely. And there was, when I was a police officer, so many times I'd be locking up young uh, juveniles, and their parents weren't involved in their life. They didn't give a damn what was happening with them. So I'm not going to criticize a mom that's trying to do everything she can not to get her kid uh, to go off the wrong way. Yeah. about how afraid she is for his future. Yes. If he goes out there, if he's disrespectful to the wrong person, a police officer, for example, given the current climate, yep. everything that's been happening lately with police brutality, all these shootings of unarmed black men. So she does not want that to happen to I her son. So. I yeah. love it. When I read this story, I, I was so happy and just excited because I thought, this mom actually took it into her own hands and she said, I am going to change this today. At 10, 10 is a perfect age to absolutely, change it. Absolutely. Can I say one thing though? I was kind of shocked by the images. That photo that we were just looking at. Crying. Where he's being. Yeah, it seems like the mom was on a photo shoot. Well, she well, was. Yeah. She was no, the only thing about this, she was wrong look, for putting look, this, this on one Facebook. In the car. She, yeah. she put it on Facebook. I think that this should have been a private matter. matter. It should not have been First on thing. Facebook. And also, if you're going to call the cops on your kids and do this, which, by the way, my husband and I have talked about this, we would call the cops on little cat, the, the fake cop, like, like a friendly cop. <laughs> but come to that. But we, we already talked about we would do this. And we were just talking about this two days ago before we even started planning the topics for Hot Talk Panel. And I found out about this mother in Georgia. But I'll say this you got to know your kid. Because if your kid suffers from anxiety, right. this yeah. is the kid that'll run away right. and say, What, mom? You want to do this to me? Well, watch what I do to you. Right. You know? Well, I think he's completely humiliated now. All his friends, I'm sure, are making fun of him. Exactly. Kids have 
specific memories that they remember from when they were a kid, and I think yeah. she was just snapping pictures. But a lot so that of kids are sheltered nowadays, and they don't know what the consequences are or what they're facing in the future. And this is a perfect example of showing them what could happen Absolutely. if you don't straighten out. And exactly. I also think, I think it's a good thing. that this will give other parents some good ideas, because he was being disrespectful to his teacher. Not a friend, not a sister, not buddies in the right. neighborhood. It was a reason. teacher. Yeah. Exactly. And I really believe that she changed his life on that day. And 10, yeah. and ten years old is a perfect date to, to yeah. teach these kids something. All right, so for more information, that went by fast. Yeah. <laughs> for more information on our panelists, head to wendyshow.com. Up next, we've got the hottest summer toys to present to you. Don't go far. So here to show us some of the hottest toys of the summer is Toy Insider. Say hello to our longtime friend, Lori Shack. <laughs> Lori! Hi! So great to see so, you know the sun is back out and those kids, they are done with tests. They are done with homework. They want to do what kids do best. They want to go outside and have some fun! Yeah. Yeah. So we are going to start with our home run baseball trainer by step two. So this is great. Hold her for the bat. Okay, we have a release here, so we can put this on either side. Our okay. ball comes down, and uh oh! oh. oh. And I see that Come this is on. a grow with you toy. It is a grow oh. with you toy. Oh, almost a home so, run. So, Lori, this is the tallest, and so the this smallest is, the tallest. is down here. It starts for kids as young as three years old, right? So it's fifty-nine dollars. Everything is nice and compact. I love this. This is perfect. Okay, Lori, it's what perfect. else? All right, so there is a new sport that is really. Um, just all the rage now. It's called pickleball. Oh. So there are courts that are popping up all over, but now you can bring it home. Okay. This is Zoom pickleball. You set this whole thing up in your driveway. Okay. It comes with the net, a carry case, the rackets. Come so on. So it's a cross between tennis. Oh. Between tennis, racquetball, ping pong, it's such a Pick great a ball, game. I love it. Great for all this ages. This right here speaks to the crafter in all me. Right, hey, so kids. I know you love this. So this, you know, we know that kids love a space that's just theirs. Yeah. This is the painting teepee. So it's huge. We have this beautiful teepee. It comes with paints, a palette, a paintbrush. But look at the blank canvas that the kids get to color. This is the best. It's the best. And not only do they do the outside, they do the inside. Yes. And it's big, so a bunch of kids can get inside and play. And how much is this? This is $170, and this is like four and up. Four and up and $170. $170, this but it's beautiful. This is fun beautiful. for the whole day. All right, what do we have here? All right, so as a mom, we both know that bubbles are one of those go-to things that you always have for your kids, right? Turn it this way. We're going to unscrew this. Now it's a little messy. It's an outdoor toy. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. So these are the unbelievable bubbles by Uncle Bubble. Okay. We're going to pull this out. Okay. Oh. Open the wand. Oh, okay. And look. Wow. <laughs> wow. How this, this is a good one. Those? This is fun. This, Lots of fun. These are so fun. So these are $20, and they're beautiful. They're so much fun. They'll keep the kids busy for hours. Absolutely. What's next? All right. So this next game is by Patch Products, and it's going to turn our kids into little secret agents. Their mission, they have to defuse the chrono bomb. Okay. So I'm going to set this. <laughs> and now, the kids, so all of this netting comes. It's really like the laser beams. Kids can set this up in their room using furniture, outside using lawn furniture, trees. Okay. They have to get through the maze. Like when you're robbing a bank. Yeah. You know they what I'm saying? To, they have to pick up the cards. Yes. Get through. And they have to defuse the bomb without hitting anything. Chrono bomb. And I did and it. So they attach it to the chairs attach and furniture it to the and stuff. Chair. And this what, is cute. It's really cute. And kids can either play against the clock if they're alone, or they can play with their friends and race against time. Okay. Is that great? This is terrific. Now, how much is this, so and this what are the ages? So this is about $24.99, um, and for 8 and up. 8 and up. Okay. Now, okay. we all saw all the right. movie uh, Toy Thing with Tom Hanks. So you want to channel that oh. inner Tom. Um, so this is our gigantic step-and-play piano, but I have a little song <laughs> for you. What about this? You know All right. what? This so, is very creative. This is very creative. There's actually eight different instruments the kids can play in here. It's so cool. There's four different modes of play, including one where kids can actually play and play it back.
to themselves into record mode. Wow. Volume control for mom and dad. Perfect. And we can wipe this clean, roll it up, take it anywhere, play it indoors, outdoors. It's great. How much is this? So this is $96. Perfect. Okay. okay. Finally, right. this is our last thing. So oh. We, oh my God. we know that kids love a special mode of transportation when summertime hits, right? Yes. So this is our Dare Way. It's by Famosa. All right. Jonah? In other words, it looks like a Segway. It's it a looks segway. like it's a Segway for little kids. How many kids. pounds? I'm 165. All am, right. I, am I going to break it? <laughs> no, you won't. It's really oh for 90 and under. Oh. Okay. A plus. I'm going to get on this. Okay. But we have Jonah and Mia, and they're going to show us what it does. Yay! $199. And how does it run? Um, you just, it, there, you plug it in, you charge it, you step on the gas if you want to give it a try. This is for kids eight and up, always wear a helmet. Hold on. Step on the gas. Gently, other side, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody, these kids are adorable too. These toys, all of them are worth over $600 in studio audience. You're all going home with all of them. successful from million dollar listing new york frederick eklund and suit up in style we've got the best bathing suit for every body this summer you're gonna look hot tuesday on an all-new wendy we partnered with aaron's to give away rooms in the winter room in june contest we need a new living room with an rca 65 inch smart tv and other electronics or a new laundry room with a state-of-the-art samsung washer and dryer go to wendyshow.com and tell us why you should win a room in june and you might end up owning it how are you doing it's time for ask wendy hey hi wendy my name is soli how you doing hi soli how can i help um, I'm a social worker and I should be getting a supervisor position next month. My problem is I'm friends with everyone at work. Um, how do I get them to respect me in my new role and should I still be having lunch with them? <laughs> I mean, we've talked about this before on the show and I, my rule still stands. It's nice to know people at work yeah. and be kind, but they're not paying your bills. Whenever it comes down to you or them, you always better choose you. Yes. That's number one. And then the second thing with regards to work, unfortunately, it's lonely at the top. You order your sandwich, you eat it at your desk by yourself with your new larger paycheck and your yes. new larger title. Yeah. Okay? Thank you. All right, Soli. We have... Oh, wait. Okay. Um... More Ask Wendy next with, uh, what would you do if your boyfriend found a nude photo of your ex in your cell phone? Next. Watch The Wendy Show whenever you want on my YouTube channel. Hot topics, celebrity interviews, and of course my legendary after show. It's all on YouTube. Subscribe today. How you doing? How you doing, Wendy? Mm -hmm. So, my name is Empress. Hi, Empress. I've been in a relationship with my boyfriend for three years. Okay. And I recently got bored, and I texted an ex. Mm. So, he sent me a picture of his package. Okay. And my boyfriend found it about a week later, and he's really upset about it. So, I just want to know how I can regain his trust. Oh, he's still with you? Yeah. <laughs> Because under this particular circumstance, mm -hmm. I bet you 50% of this room would have left you. Yeah. yeah. Clap if you would have left her. Yeah. Damn. And first, first of all, if you're going to do something like that, which is wrong, you know, you need to find something else to do when you're bored. But why wouldn't you erase it right after you? I know. What was, what was I thinking? Right? Were you drinking? I must have been, yeah. Um, Empress, I can't really advise you on what to do to regain, because if I was him, I would have 
left you. Yeah, yeah honey. I How old you. are you? 28. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You live and you learn. You're yeah. on your own. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Spring to Ching is next. Don't go far. Ching, I love this game. It's where one lucky viewer could win up to $5,000 on our big wheel. So let's get today's contestant on the line. Hello. How you doing, Michelle Baker? I mean, Booker Hi. from Streetsboro, yeah, Ohio. Doing, uh, hi, Michelle. <laughs> okay, so, so Michelle, you are today's Spring to Ching contestant. Have you been watching yeah. the show? <laughs> I mean, yes. I mean, all the details. Yes. Okay, perfect. So let's find out how much you're going to be playing for. My Suzanne is going to flip her hair and spin the wheel at the same time. Go, Suzanne. Go, Suzanne. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Michelle, listen very closely because I'm going to give you 15 seconds to answer the following question. And your first answer is your only answer, okay? Okay, okay. Okay. So yesterday in Hot Topics, we talked about a video that went viral of a woman whose false teeth fell out when she blew out her birthday candles. <laughs> the question to you is, what birthday was she celebrating? And go! Her, her, she's 102 years old. Yes! Michelle! You got $1,000, Michelle. Thanks for playing our Spring to Ching. If you want a chance to win up to $5,000, keep watching every day, because we might be calling you next. We'll be right back. If you're ever in the New York City area, why don't you come and be one of my co-hosts? Join my studio audience. Uh, while the rest of the shows are in reruns and go on vacation, we're here with new shows until the end of July. New York is beautiful this time of year. Go to wendyshow.com. The tickets are free, and I guarantee you a good time. Did you have a good time today? show on my YouTube channel. I want to thank my Hot Talk panelists. Thanks for coming and mixing it up. Lori Schacht, good job with the toy presentation. I love my new segue. And uh, thank you to my co-host, my studio audience. Monday, we've got a new edition of Trendy at Wendy with some incredible discounts on, and amazing savings on summer products. And of course, I've got you covered with all the juicy hot topics. I love you for watching today. And I'll see you next time. Bye -bye.